Hey there, my name is Jonathan. Today I'm going to be showing you how to set up your own Google Ads PPC um, campaign. All right. So the first things first, if you want to engage in any Google Shopping ads, the first thing you need to do uh, after setting up your Google Ads um, account would be setting up your Google's Merchant account. So you need to come into Google Merchant Center. It's a completely different uh, account from Google Ads. So you just need to set this up. And it's quite simple. It's just using your Gmail account and you just set it up. All right. So Google AdSense, Google AdWords has already been integrated into Google Ads because uh, Google has changed the advertising platform to reflect uh, the basically the entire scope of the advertising campaign. Uh, this change was very recent around uh, June 2018, right? So this is just a new tutorial for that. So um, if you are interested in Google Shopping Ads, after uh, setting up your Google Merchant Center, what you need to come do is come into Google Ads. Uh, you come into tools over here, you come into setup and you go into linked account. After you go into linked account, you can scroll down, you come to uh, Google Merchant Center. So I've already connected my own uh, account basically to this um, Google Ads account. But what you need to do is basically linked, uh, sign up first and then you link your, your Merchant Center account and all the products that are from your website on your Google Merchant Center will be immediately synced to your Google Ads. All right. So the first things first, uh, what you have got to do is to come in here on the left hand side, you come into campaigns. All right, so you just come click on the plus button here or on the plus button here. You just press click and you press new campaign. So what you're presented here, here with is the different different options that you can select for what type of uh, objective you want to use, right? So for example, uh, website traffic is to drive traffic to your website, product and brand consideration. It's uh, a nearer step to the purchase process, generating leads, sales, which is basically conversions. Awareness is just a touch and go sort of uh, promotion marketing. If you want people to install more of your apps, you can use this. So at the bottom left here as well, you can see uh, the different different campaign types that you can use uh, by using these conversion objectives. So uh, for example, the search and display and shopping is only available for conversions, uh, search and display shopping videos, basically YouTube. Um, and as you can see, there are different different campaign types. So I won't go into the different campaign types now. Uh, I've, I've done that in a separate video. I'll link it uh, in the description below. And uh, what you want to do, I'm just going to use sales for this video. And after using sales, uh, pressing sales, you can click on what type of uh, campaign type that you want to use, right? So I'm um, not going to use shopping. I'm just going to use search for this um, tutorial right now. So I'm just going to select website visits. I'm going to put in... Uh, just a random google.com so if you're a local business you probably want to select a uh, phone calls if you're an app developer you want uh, sorry for a CEO of an app, app company you want to install more of the downloads you can probably select that all right so I'm just going to select website visits and press continue all right so coming into uh, selecting your campaign settings all right after selecting campaign settings I'm just going to put campaign name win over here, uh, among my networks, I can select whether I want to advertise on the search network or the display network, right? So I'm uh, much, uh, I like the search network much better than the display network because the display network is more for remarketing uh, purposes. I can cover that in the future video, so I'm just going to untick that. Uh, afterwards, locations, I can come in here and select uh, all countries in the world uh, where I'm staying right now, Singapore, or uh, enter another location, right? So I can just enter in a location, for example, if I put a uh, uh, North Carolina United States I can target it so I can basically select it or I can exclude it so for example I don't want to uh, advertise in Chicago for example uh, Chicago Illinois I come here and I exclude all right so it's quite uh, very self-explanatory and very very easy to use you can come in here uh, location options and basically uh, customize even further all right. Uh, another thing that I like to do is to come in here to advanced search and basically uh, Google will give you a visual representation of your location, right? So it's very, very easy to visualize. So for example, if I was in uh, Chicago, right? And I wanted to, for example, uh, exclude Illinois, right? If I want to exclude Illinois, I exclude it and I can basically see a visual representation of Illinois just being carved out right there. All right. Another great thing would be if you are a local business and you are advertising on Google PPC, right? You can use the radius objective. And uh, for example, if I had a restaurant or something near Columbia, I'll just go ahead and put that in Columbia. All right. I just select it, press target 
and uh, anywhere within 20 miles of my Columbia location, I will be advertising my PBC too. I'm so I'm just gonna save that. All right, so I, I like advanced search a lot. All right, the next thing would be selecting your language. So people who have expressed uh, their, uh, the language type of uh, their, their internet web browser uh, will use this. Next thing would be budget, the average you want to spend per day, uh, delivery method, standard and accelerated. Standard would be basically uh, Google takes your, for example, if I'm putting in $5 right now, right? If I'm, uh, Google basically takes that $5 and in the standard mode, it basically spends it uh, evenly throughout the day. Whereas accelerated would be, for example, in the morning, if Google sees very, very good results, it would just spend the entirety of the budget or a majority of the budget uh, in during that time period and when it's getting results, right? I would generally, uh, because data collection is a numbers game, you should generally want to select a standard to get a more uh, accurate representation of your statistics that you're gathering. All right, the next thing would be bidding. So Google PPC uh, bidding, what you want to focus on, this would be the conversion objective. So obviously, if I'm uh, um, converting for sales, I need conversions, right? Another thing would be conversion value. You can come down here and put in your target ROAS, which is basically your return on ad spend, how much you want uh, to get back from your R, um, from your ad spend. So you can uh, basically, uh, if you're not sure what it is, you can come here. So for example, if I was only spending $1 per day, if, and if I wanted uh, to get back $5 per day, right, my target ROAS would be 500%, all right? Uh, clicks would be not so suitable for the conversion campaign, so I'm not, not going to go into a CBC click bidding right now. So basically, this is it. Uh, an alternative method is to select your bid strategy here. I would just go through just one more, which is basically uh, target CPA. So target CPA would be uh, target cost per action, which is basically how much money are you willing to spend for the customer to be uh, to get one of those actions. So for example, I want uh, um, my customer, my potential customer, to click on this particular product link. For example, right? How much money am I willing to spend uh, on that action? Uh, next one would be target outranking share. So basically, uh, you know, uh, if your Google search page, right, on the top, I'm basically that's the number one spot. How much am I willing to pay uh, to dominate that and, and basically outrank that opponent of mine? So that's uh, target outranking share. Uh, last thing I would like to touch on is basically enhanced CPC. So enhanced CPC is basically an optimized version of uh, manual CPC. So once you have uh, gathered uh, a fair amount of data, you should want to definitely use enhanced CPC such that you don't have to keep monitoring your ads, right? The algorithm is working for you and optimizing your ads for you. All right, the next thing will be start to end date. I mean, this is quite self-explanatory. Uh, dynamic search ads, right? Dynamic search ads, as you can see here, you get automated search targeting, customized headlines based on your website. So Google's uh, bots, right? It's crawlers will basically come into your website and uh, scroll for everything on your website, uh, all the words, all the text, all the alt text, basically. And they will target people uh, who have similar interests or similar searches uh, compared to your website. So for example, if I was running a fashion website, right, I have a lot of words like uh, fashion, runway, clothes, uh, apparel, right, those things. And so Google will take all this data that they have crawled with using their bots and then they will basically dynamically uh, show your ads to these type of people who are searching for, your, um, for similar products and some, uh, similar keywords. All right, selecting audiences. Uh, this is not very important, uh, but I'm just can talk about it. You can uh, key in what type of audiences you want, right? So, for example, uh, if my um, if my target audience was apparel, right? As I was saying just now, I have here woman apparel. For example, I put in winter jacket. All right, so I'm just going to target people who are generally searching for winter jacket, uh, women's apparel, uh, apparel and accessories, and maybe active wear. So these are the people who you will be targeting. This is basically interest targeting. And what they mean by in-market audiences is basically people who have already a uh, very, very strong intent of buying because they are searching for that product. Whereas at the bottom here, as you can see, once I um, collapse this, you can see remarketing and similar audiences. So you can choose on how they have interacted with your business previously, such that you're able to remarket to these people. All right. Uh, so the ta audiences targeting setting, you can use uh, observation or targeting. So this will really narrow the reach of your audience, as you can see here. And uh, observation is definitely recommended. So I don't think you should touch that at all. 
Next thing would be adding site links, right? So site links and uh, extensions are very important. So call out call and site links. This is basically additional data snippets that you can put in your Google Ads such that it's uh, displaying more information with one single ad. So I'm just going to uh, go to Google and just show you an example of, for example, a call extension right now. So, for example, if you are running an online uh, online local business, right, and uh, you are targeting people who want to come to your restaurant, for example. So, you generally have, for example, here, you have an ad, and then you already have a number that is uh, ready to call. So, if someone presses your ad, it immediately goes to the phone, and uh, someone is immediately able to call your restaurant and basically book a table. So, it's um, very, very useful for local businesses. So, call out and site link right so site link would be having like more information about your um, company and your business basically embedded already into the ad so let me just show you right as you can see here uh, there's basically the main headline on top but uh, at the bottom here you can clearly see there's basically more information such as your categories of products and stuff that are uh, showing more information just by uh, running one ad so it's really really useful for increasing your presence right increasing your presence as well as increasing the amount of information that you can display to your audiences uh, before they actually click on your ad. So increasing your chances and your click-through rate. So we're just going to move on. All right, so we're coming into the ads group, basically the, like the ad sets uh, level right now. So what you're seeing here is ad group one, you can add new ad group, you can add new ad group, and you can come in here and basically do uh, your keyword targeting, right? So for what type of uh, words are your potential customers searching and you're basically targeting these people. So ad group name, you can basically just change it. Win ad group, for example. Uh, for example, also targeting pets again. So basically you are using these match types, right? So match types are rules and uh, the rules that uh, Google uses to do your keyword targeting, right? So you can come in here and learn more and you they basically explain to you what are the different types of, um, so there's broad match, there is broad match modifier, there's fra uh, phrase match, there's exact match as well as negative match. So for example, if I just key in um, pets, right? If I key in pets, if I key in uh, pets and then I key in pets. So these all mean different things and you can, I'm just going to bring it up right here. So the negative one would be a negative match is basically uh, when people, uh, we don't want to show up for results that when, when people are searching for pets. This one would be I when people are searching for the exact term pets, right, which is the exact match right here, uh, your search ad result will come out. The second one would be when you have uh, inverted inverted commas right uh, basically you want a phrase match so i want for example uh, pets galore i want this particular phrase to come up only my, my search ad will basically come up only when people search for, for this particular phrase you can come up right here and see there's a broad match as well as a broad match modifier so broad match modifier there is a plus in front whereas a broad match doesn't have so this is basically a very, very broad term such that, for example, pets with dogs, if people are searching, or dogs and pets, uh, where do I find pets, something like that. If people are searching for that, then generally they'll come up in the broad match. Whereas for broad match modifier, is something of more closer variations, but not synonyms. All right. So you just got to read up on, on this help section to really understand uh, how you do your keyword targeting. So uh, I'm not going to fill up uh, the other ad groups and I'm just going to move on to the ad copy itself. All right. So I'm now in the create ad section. I'm just going to press create ad. And all right, as you can see here, you can already preview what is going to be uh, going to be showing on your ad, right? So uh, this is basically a search ad. So I'm just going to put, for example, I want my ad to go to google.com. My headline, as you can see, pets are great. So there are three headlines here. Uh, pets rock. Then maybe I'll put like pet food available, right? So you can really see uh, in real time what your changes are. Uh, this is uh, the, your display path is um, so for example uh, after putting in your URL you want to put in something extra that you want your visitors to see so for example great pet food pet food 
and you wanted your um, people who will potentially click on your ad to see that so you generally put in all this information here okay so your description is basically your ad copy so uh, I'm just gonna give an example we have great pet food here click here to buy our product for example and description 2 will just be below that uh, great discounts buy now all right the ad URL option here is more to do with tagging uh, so it's not very important and I'm not going to touch upon that because it's, um, it's honestly not very important all right, so I'm done. I already have this ad. Uh, so generally, what you want to do is to create multiple ads, right? Because if, for example, one ad copy was not working so not so well, so then Google uh, will generally optimize for you to see which ad is running the best, and then you're basically spending less money for more results. So I would generally recommend different types of ad copies so you can do like a split test A and B and sort of thing. All right, so I'm moving on to confirmation right now. So after uh, creating and setting up all these ads, uh, your ad is ready to get published, right? So you just uh, review all your information and you just press continue the campaign and uh, your campaign will be published after it is being approved by Google. All right, so that's basically it for setting up a Google a PPC ad. Just keep in mind that uh, when you're setting up your ads, uh, try to always try to test new types of ad copy, right? People get uh, not necessarily fatigued by seeing the same ad, but uh, definitely using different ad copy and using split test A and B will really get you uh, the results that you want. All right, so I hope you have uh, gained, gained some value from this video. And um, if you have any questions regarding Google PBC, please drop them down in the comment section below. Um, thank you for watching and thank you for your time. All right, I'll see you in the next one.